morning boys and girls. I hope you are all doing well still. Um, before I start back into our Ozma of Oz story, I wanted to go back over the words I asked you about yesterday. I asked you about molting. Belina talked about how she didn't like to lay her egg when she was molting. And I wondered if you knew what that meant. It means to lose her feathers. They get new feathers and the old ones fall off. Um, it's a slow process and they look kind of straggly when that happens. And the other word I asked you about was cannibal. A cannibal is a person or animal that eats its own species. So like if I decided to eat a human, that would make me a cannibal. And it's pretty gross. Um, Belina says she's not going to eat her egg because she's not a cannibal. She doesn't eat chicken or chicken eggs. So, alright. The next chapter was called Letters in the Sand. I hope you had some good predictions. So let's get started and see what we're going to find out today. Walking a little way back from the water's edge towards the grove of trees, Dorothy came to a flat stretch of white sand that seemed to have strange signs marked upon its surface, just as one would write upon sand with a stick. What does it say? she asked the yellow hen, who trotted along beside her in a rather dignified fashion. How should I know? returned the hen. I cannot read. Oh, can't you? Certainly not. I've never been to school, you know. Well, I have, admitted Dorothy, but the letters are big and far apart, and it's hard to spell out the words. But she looked at each letter carefully and finally discovered that these were the words written in the sand. Beware the wheelers. That's strange, declared the hen while when Dorothy read aloud the words. What do you suppose the wheelers are? Folks that wheel, I guess? They must have wheelbarrows or baby cabs or hand carts, said Dorothy. Perhaps they're automobiles, suggested the yellow hen. There is no need to be aware of baby cabs or wheelbarrows, but automobiles are dangerous things. Several of my friends have been run over by them. Can't be automobiles, replied Dorothy, for this is a new and wild country without even trolley cars or telephones. People here haven't been discovered yet, I'm sure. That is, if there are any people. So I don't believe there can be any automobiles, Belina. Perhaps not, admitted the yellow hen. Where are you going now? Over to those trees to see if I can find some fruit or nuts, answered Dorothy. She tramped across the sand, skirting the foot of one of the rock, little rocky hills that stood near, and soon reached the edge of the forest. At first she was greatly disappointed because the nearer trees were all punita or cottonwood or eucalyptus and bore no fruit or nuts at all. But by and by, when she was almost in despair, the little girl came upon two trees that had promised to furnish her with plenty of food. One was quite full of square paper boxes, which grew in clusters on the limbs, and upon the biggest and ripest boxes, the word lunch could be read in neat raised letters. This tree seemed to bear all year round, for there were other lunchbox blossoms on the branches and on other tiny little lunchboxes that were not quite green and evidently not fit to eat until they had grown bigger. The leaves of the trees were all paper napkins, and it presented a very pleasing appearance to the hungry little girl. But ne the tree next to the lunchbox tree was even more wonderful, for it bore quantities of tin dinner pails, which were so full and heavy that the stout branches bent underneath their weight. Some were small and dark brown in color. The larger ones were dull tin color, but the really ripe ones were pails of bright tin, that shone and glistened beautifully in the rays of the sunshine that touched them. Dorothy was delighted, and even the yellow hen acknowledged that she was surprised. The little girl stood on tiptoe and picked one of the nicest and biggest lunch boxes. Then she sat down upon the ground and eagerly opened it. Inside, she found nicely wrapped in white papers a ham sandwich, a piece of sponge cake, a pickle, a slice of new cheese, and an apple. Each thing had a separate stem, and so had to be picked off the side of the box. But Dorothy found them to be delicious, and she ate every bite of the luncheon in the box before she had finished. A lunch isn't exactly a breakfast, she said to Belina, who sat beside her, curiously watching. But when one is hungry, one can eat even supper in the morning and not complain. I hope your lunch box was perfectly ripe, observed the yellow hen in an anxious tone. So much sickness is caused by eating green things. Oh, I'm sure it was ripe, declared Dorothy. All, that is, except the pickle, and the pickle just has to be green, Belina. But everything tasted perfectly splendid, and I'd rather have it than a church picnic. And now I think I'll pick a dinner pail, 
to have when I get hungry again. And then we'll start out and explore the country and see where we are. Haven't you any idea what country this is, inquired Belina? None at all. But listen, I'm quite sure it is a fairy country. Or such things as lunch boxes and dinner pails wouldn't be growing upon trees. Besides, Belina, being a hen, you wouldn't be able to talk in any civilized country like Kansas, where there are no fairies at all. Perhaps we are in the land of Oz, said the hen thoughtfully. No, that can't be, answered the little girl, because I've been to the land of Oz, and it is surrounded by a horrid desert that no one can cross. Sorry, my dog got his foot stuck in my boot. Then how did you get away from there again, asked Belina. I had a pair of silver shoes that carried me through the air, but I lost them, said Dorothy. Ah, oh, indeed, remarked the yellow hen in a tone of unbelief. Anyhow, resumed the girl, there is no seashore near the land of Oz, so this surely must be some other fairy country. While she was speaking, she selected a bright and pretty dinner pail that seemed to have a stout handle and picked it from its branch. Then, accompanied by the yellow hen, she walked out of the shadow of the trees toward the seashore. They went away, part way across the sands, when Belina suddenly cried in a voice of terror. What's that? Dorothy turned quickly around and saw coming out of the path that led from between the trees the most peculiar person she had ever laid eyes on. It was the form of a man, except it walked, or rather rolled, upon all fours, and its legs were the same length as its arms, giving them the appearance of the four legs of a beast. Yet it was no beast that Dorothy had discovered, for the person was clothed in the most gorgeously in embroidered garments of many colors and wore a straw hat perched jauntily upon the side of its head. But it differed from human beings in the aspect that, instead of hands and feet, there grew at the end of its arms and legs round wheels. And by means of these wheels, it rolled very swiftly over the level ground. Sorry, my dog and cat are fighting under the table. Afterward, Dorothy found that these odd wheels were the same hard substance that our fingernails and toenails are composed of, and she also learned that the creatures of this strange race were born in this strange fashion. But when our little girl first caught sight of the first individual of that race that was destined to cause her a lot of trouble, she had an idea that the brilliantly clothed personage on the, was on roller skates, which were attached to his hands as well as his, feet, as his feet. Run! screamed the yellow hen, fluttering away in great fright. It's a wheeler! A wheeler? exclaimed Dorothy. What can that be? Don't you remember the warning in the sand? Beware the wheelers! Run! Tell you I run! So Dorothy ran, and the wheeler gave a sharp wild cry and came after her in full chase. Looking over her shoulder as she ran, the girl now saw a great procession of wheelers emerging from the forest, dozens and dozens of them, all clad in splendid tight-fitting garments and all rolling swiftly toward her and uttering their wild, strange cries. They're sure to catch us, panted the girl, who was still carrying the heavy dinner pail she had picked. I can't run much further, Belina. Climb up this hill, quick, said the hen, and Dorothy found she was very near the a heap of loose and jagged rocks that they had passed on their way to the forest. The yellow hen was now fluttering among the rocks, and Dorothy followed as best she could, half climbing and half tumbling up the rough and steep side. She was none too soon, for the foremost wheeler reached the hill a moment after her, but while the girl scrambled up the rocks, the creature stopped short with howls of rage and disappointment. Dorothy now heard the yellow hen laughing in her cackling henny way. Don't worry, my dear, cried Bolina. They can't follow us among these rocks, so we're safe now. Dorothy stopped at once and sat down upon a broad boulder, for she was all out of breath. The rest of the wheelers had now reached the foot of the hill, but it was evident that their wheels could not roll upon the rough and jagged rocks, and therefore they were helpless to follow Dorothy and the hen to where they had taken refuge. But they circled all around the hill so that the child and Belina were fast prisoners and could not come down without being captured. Then the creature shook their front wheels at Dorothy in a threatening manner, and seemed that it seemed that they were able to speak as well as make their dreadful outcries, for several of them shouted, We'll get to you in time, never fear, and when we do, we'll tear you into little bits. Why are you so cruel to me? asked Dorothy. I'm a stranger in your country and have done no harm. No harm? cried one who seemed to be their leader. Did you not pick our lunch boxes and dinner pails? 
Have you not stolen a dinner pail still in your hand? I only picked one of each, she answered. I was hungry and didn't know that the trees were yours. That is no excuse, retorted the leader, who was clothed in a most gorgeous suit. It is the law here that whoever picks a dinner pail without our permission must die immediately. Don't you believe him, said Belina. I'm sure the trees do not belong to these awful creatures. They are fit for any mischief, and that is my opinion. They would try to kill us just the same as if you hadn't picked a dinner pail. I think so, agreed Dorothy. But what shall we do now? Stay where we are, advised the yellow hen. We are safe from the wheelers until we starve to death anyhow. And before that time comes, a good many things can happen. All right, so what do you think about the wheelers? Do they sound kind of scary? I mean, their hands and feet are wheels instead of hands and feet. That's kind of strange. Do you think they're going to turn out to be as mean as they sound? I mean, Dorothy did pick some food off the tree without permission, but she didn't know any better. She didn't know they belonged to the wheelers. Do you think they'll find a way out of this predicament? They're kind of stuck for now. There's no way up, no way down. If they go down, they're the wheelers. If they go up, they're just at the top of the hill. Let's see. I don't think there were any words in this particular section that I feel like I need to ask you to think about. So just think about what might happen next. The next chapter is called TikTok the Machine Man. So think about that, who TikTok might be, and what he might look like, and how he might help Belina and Dorothy get out of this trouble that they're in with the wheelers. And we will pick it back up tomorrow. You guys have a great day. Bye.